Um, hi there, good evening. It's uh, Addy here. Um, apologies uh, uh, for my video not working very well, uh, but that's partly because um, I'm actually in Mexico and the um, uh, on holiday at the moment and the bandwidth isn't great. So I hope you can all hear me. Um, I'll start to share my slides. Um, Thank you so very much for inviting me. Uh, a huge thanks to uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Odena, uh, for recommending me to the um, Sri Lanka College of Psychiatrists. And, uh, uh, you know, my thoughts go out to all of you in the country at the moment. And I really hope the situation, uh, you know, continues to improve. Um, so in the interest of time, um, I've been given 20 minutes and I'll try and stick to that. Um, so we're going to talk about um, depression uh, in, in children and young people under the age of 18 and what to do when SSRIs don't work. I will try my very best to stay on until the end. I'd love to hear how uh, things are being managed in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are a bit limited in the UK because of, some of you might be familiar, because of the recommendations by NICE. So what I hope to cover today very quickly is, you know, why me? Why, why am I uh, uh, being asked to present this? Uh, uh, a quick catch up about unipolar depression uh, and then what NICE or the National Institute of Clinical Evidence recommends for when fluoxetine doesn't work in the UK because um, standard gold standard practice in the UK is to treat uh, depression in under 18s with fluoxetine first line. Um, the concept of difficult to treat depression or, you know, when two management strategies haven't worked, uh, in, including preferably two pharmacological and one psychological intervention, what was previously conceptualized as treatment resistant depression, and then move on to what if two SSRIs don't work. So I guess the question is why me? Um, I am, as a uh, professor uh, uh, introduced, uh, I, I lead on a, a national second opinion service. Uh, uh, this is called SAMS for short. Uh, we love our acronyms in the UK. Uh, everything has to have an acronym. So um, I receive referrals and that's where we're based. We're in the northeast of England. It's a beautiful part of the world. Um, and uh, we, we, as you can see, we are in the middle of the United Kingdom uh, and uh, exactly at the same level almost as Northern Ireland. So we, we get referrals from across the country and that does mean sometimes for the team a lot of traveling involved to go and see people. Uh, although I think with the silver lining to COVID has been the advent of um the, uh, of, of being able to pe see people remotely via, via Teams now. The other reason, I suppose, is the, the, is the mention of the Northeast England South Asia Mental Health Alliance, which we developed uh, in 2018, and it continues to thrive. Um, please do consider signing up. Um, there is no cost involved. Uh, and we are trying to work together with partners in South Asia, uh, which includes Sri Lanka, of course, uh, to, to improve research and training across the lifespan, really, in mental health. So that includes children, uh, young people, adults, and, of course, the elderly. So I have a particular interest in, in this field, as you can gather. In terms of unipolar depression, the quick um, update, and I say this particularly to lots of trainees, is, is going back to basics, which is, and I'm sure that in Sri Lanka, people are more particular about this, uh, but in the UK, people often forget that depression has to last at least two weeks, um, uh, even in kids. It must be present for at least two weeks, and there must be these five or more uh, uh, changes. I'm not going to read them out to you because um, uh, uh, that would be rather patronizing and I know it's late in the day for you all. Um, the important thing I just also wanted to mention, though I haven't got it on the slides, is I'm sure you're all aware that with the ICD-11 that has come in, um, particularly relevant for children and adolescents, now for um, even moderate depression, 
one can have psychotic features present. So classically, it was always thought that severe depressive episodes only can have psychotic features. But in the ICD-11, even moderate uh, depressive episodes can have psychotic features. And I think um, we need to bear that in mind, especially for uh, young people. So first of all, I'll cover what NICE says about uh, beyond fluoxetine, because as I mentioned before, the gold standard is fluoxetine. And the way NICE appraises the literature is that it, it reviews all the literature and the maximum number of studies for child and adolescent depression are in uh, with the use of fluoxetine. Um, hence, the, hence it being the gold standard. And what NICE basically recommends is that for depression that is unresponsive to treatment or recurrent depression or psychotic depression um, at levels tiers two and three, um, there should either be individual CBT plus or minus fluoxetine. And if shared decision-making indicates um, that these needs are not being met, one can try one of these other interventions. Now that's very limited because actually NICE says very clearly, if, if fluoxetine isn't working, then you can try other agents, um, but, but um, it, it really just limits you to sertraline and citalopram. In fact, those are the only other agents uh, that are commonly used in the UK. I want to introduce to you the concept of difficult to treat depression as opposed to treatment resistant depression. So for a very long time, we have identified disorders as treatment resistant. But if you look at it from the perspective of the patient, it, it sort of tends to um, almost blame the disorder or the patient uh, possibly at times for holding out and opposing Whereas difficult to treat depression is a much more collaborative concept which brings together the patient, the family and the physician that we appreciate that this is a difficult to treat condition. Um, it also takes away from that acute illness model that works very well in physical health, but doesn't, as most of us know, work very well in, um, in, in, the, in the mental health field and takes it more to a chronic biopsychosocial uh, model, which focuses not necessarily on cure, but on optimizing symptoms and minimizing the impact of these symptoms. There's a, a, a very helpful uh, uh, paper that uh, my colleague, Professor Hamish McAllister Williams present, uh, has written in the Journal of Affective Disorders. So the principles of difficult to treat depression, and I, I would really put in a plea and, uh, to, to all of you is that if you are struggling to treat any disorder in young people, not just depression, I think the keystone has to be, and thank you to uh, the previous speaker who reminded us that you know comorbidities are pretty much the norm in mental health, particularly the extremes of age with young people um, and the elderly, is to reconsider your differential diagnosis. And then identify and treat any comorbidities. Uh, and, and this is really important when it comes to young people in particular. And then think about formulation, you know, a more detailed formulation, thinking about the predisposing, precipitating and perpetuating factors. And I appreciate that this is old hat, um, you, you, I'm sure you're all doing it, um, but really, really important. And the reason I say this is that when we get referrals into our service for depression and or bipolar, the question we're always asking is, is, is it actually depression or bipolar that is being threat or something else? In young people, particularly in depression, the challenge often is, is there a comorbidity of autism spectrum disorder? 
Um, and then the impact of trauma, particularly early life adversity, and the really helpful new diagnostic entity of complex PTSD. Um, we can't go into the details of that, but again, just want to emphasize the, the importance of considering that both in the differential diagnosis, but also including it in the formulation. Um, and then of course, the concept of emerging personality disorders, um, you know, trauma and life adversity sometimes can impact so severely that um, young people are presenting with those features and, you know, they may or may not have depression on their own. It could be depression associated with personality issues. So moving on to the three-dimensional assessment, and again, this, um, you know, is, is something that you're all familiar with, thinking about the person factors, so uh, personality, genetics, childhood trauma, and the psychosocial environment, the illness variables, um, such as diagnosis, is this depression or bipolar, or as I mentioned, you know, something else entirely, the age of onset and the chronicity, um, the use of substances, and then, you know, the, the um, number of treatments that haven't worked, what are the nature of treatments that they've been on, and most importantly, uh, adherence to treatment and tolerability. So the apologies for this very, very busy slide, um, but this is a, a really helpful thing that takes you through the, the way to approach uh, difficult to treat depression. And this works across lifespan, by the way, it isn't just for children and adolescents, but moving on to the first bit, which is you know achieving optimal symptom control, um, using conventional treatments, first of all, um, which include medication and psychotherapy. If medication, whichever medication they're on, it is working in a limited manner, then you could consider increasing the dose, switching or augmenting. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about this. And of course, um, high intensity psychotherapy with or without medication. And then we could move on to the use of non-conventional treatments um, and uh, uh, the evidence base for this is extremely limited in children and young people. So focusing on the first bit. So if fluoxetine doesn't work, coming back to NICE, sertraline and citalopram in the UK should only be used when the following criteria have been met. That is the young person and their parents or carers must have been fully involved in discussions and must have been provided with appropriate written information. And the child or young person's depression should be sufficiently severe or causing sufficiently severe, serious symptoms to justify a trial of another antidepressant. And the written information should cover the following details uh, in it, which um, you know is really important because medical legally there have now been instances of NHS trust being taken to court for failure to provide this written information as part of any change in medication. It also recommends that if treatment isn't working, and this is coming back to the concept of difficult to treat depression, to reassess the likely causes of depression and for why the, uh, the disorder is proving difficult to treat. For example, there might be other diagnoses such as bipolar disorder. So what you're seeing is difficult to treat depression, but the reason the SSRI isn't working is that maybe it is actually bipolar disorder rather than unipolar depression or substance misuse. In the UK, the advice is that uh, because we have non-medical prescribers now, uh, nursing colleagues, psychologists who also prescribe medication, that there must have been advice before switching uh, from uh, usually a consultant in child psychiatry. Um, and the young person must have signed an appropriate and valid consent form for switching uh, medication. Now, unfortunately, NICE guidelines are... Um, uh, 
they're very prescriptive. And I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the NICE guidelines for depression in under 18s, but they actually state very clearly, based on the evidence that do not try venlafaxine, do not try metazapine, um, which sort of limits you to three SSRIs. And really after two SSRIs, our advice, and this is sort of expert consensus rather than evidence-based, um, you know, RCT-based data or network meta-analysis, is that after two SSRIs, if there's been minimal response to the SSRIs, um, consider switching to venlafaxine. But I must remind you all that this is not in keeping with NICE guidelines. And then if there has been a partial response, uh, but not sufficient, you could consider augmenting. And here I bring you to your attention, the British Association for Psychopharmacology guidelines, which state that the first line intervention um, should be considering adding quetiapin, adipiprazole, or lithium. Second line should be risperidone, thyroxin, or mirtazapine. Uh, and then third line could be the following agents. I would like to just, these, this is based on adult data. Um, and again, there are few studies, even in adults with augmentation. Uh, so it's mainly based on case records and audits, um, which is I'm sure you're familiar, a lower level of evidence base. In children and young people, the general consensus is augment with either metazapine or lamotrigine, um, because those are, are uh, better in terms of their side effect profile and response. Um, and definitely, you know, avoid uh, antipsychotics that would cause a lot of metabolic side effects, which um, we see a lot of in the UK. So in summary, um, you'll be glad to hear I'm at the end. Um, in summary, depression, as I'm sure you all gather, is a heterogeneous condition. Uh, with frequent comorbidities. If there is no response to a trial of two SSRIs, please consider reassessment and reformulation. Um, and if using management out with treatment guidelines, please take a shared uh, decision-making approach with the patient and the family and seek out a second opinion. Um, even within Sri Lanka, I'm sure you could seek out an opinion from a tertiary center, um, and if that, you know, it doesn't mean a formal referral for the family, but you could, in a, in a peer supervision way, discuss that uh, with a senior and more experienced colleague in that area. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you for inviting me. That, by the way, is the QR code for the Nisama website. I hope some of you will scan it. Uh, please join us. Um, and I hope that, it, you know, in the not so distant future, we can hold an event uh, in collaboration with the Sri Lanka College of Psychiatrists in Sri Lanka. So thank you very much. Uh, and I'll stop screen sharing um, and uh,